Water district meeting. All right. We'll call the meeting to order. And uh, that brings us to item two, which is comments from the public. And I believe we have a Mr. Flores here that would like to speak to the mic. Well, Good afternoon. I have been a resident of the Woodlands for 25 years. And on uh, December 6th, between four o'clock in the morning and Finally, you see, I, according to the uh, assistant that you, I consumed 113,550 feet per hour. But this is about the size of seven pools. And obviously, I was not flooded. I there was no other kind of incident at the, uh, my residence. I, I live alone, it's a small house. I pay about Less than twenty dollars a month when I don't use the sprinkler. The sprinklers were shut off. Uh, I work with your staff. We call the wise guys. These guys that have to find some issues to, did not find anything of relevance. Um, so I, that's why I'm here. I mean, just there uh, was a huge spike. I have all the graphs, and it's quite obvious that it has never happened in that property. I have not changed any. I have, I have not made any changes. To the piping system, toilets, everything is the same that I bought it. I'm sure there was never an incident of this crime, this property. Now, your staff gave me a credit, but not a full credit. But I believe that this is absolutely an outlier. And I'm asking you to please uh, give me that benefit. So, if you need any proper explanation, if you'd like to see the documents, so I'm happy to read it a bit for you. So this is the first time the board has heard about this, but do you know if they tested your meter to see if there were any flaws in your water meter? Yeah, I believe they, they did test it. And also the, the, uh, the gentleman who was from uh, the Wise Guys came and did all the testing. As a matter of fact, he used quite a lot of water. He used as much water that I used for a month just to test it, which is perfectly fine. It's 20 bucks. And I, uh, I certainly was shocked when I saw the. Uh, so the, how much was? Over a th it's a thousand dollars and uh, that amount is over a thousand dollars. But tell us how much the bill was and how much your credit was, and then we can. It was for. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Huh? One thousand four dollars and twenty seven cents. Okay, so you did get a credit, right? How much was the credit? Six, six, forty, six, twenty, something. I don't have the amount, David. Actually, six fifty-six forty-seven. What was the basis for the credit? Unexplained usage. What? Unexplained usage. But I mean, you think the other three hundred and fifty dollars was explained? I mean, what? I mean, how did you arrive at six hundred and fifty-six dollars versus? Crediting the one time unexplained use. Yeah, but I mean, what set the $600 versus so how crediting $980? How we do it? We base it on the use at the house for that particular period. So the gallons in question, as the customer said, was around 115,000 gallons. His average for that period is 3,000 gallons. So he gets a credit of 112,000 gallons. And it's back to the wholesale rate. Okay. Why? So we don't lose any money. So the district doesn't lose anything. You don't make any money, but you don't lose it. Because the river authority still charges us full full freight. And do we have any recourse? Do we have any recourse to the river authority? If you believe that money that water was really really used? Yeah, you can you can see on the on the, the Neptune chart. It, it clearly looks like a a toilet flapper stuck. It's it's a very very common. You can't prove it, but that's exactly what it looks like. Have you done the engineering calculations? Can you get that much water for a toilet? Oh, yeah. No, no. You get 11,000 gallons a day for the toilet. He was running about 8,000 gallons. But there is uh, actually the, the only data they have access. But by the way, I, I'm a water engineer, so I know a little bit about the water, I guess. And I uh, uh, the graph that I have here for that day 
taken from your website is 113,563 gallons. That is impossible that between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. And, and the time is marked here, that you can get- One, the, one the, hour uh, period. Right, that is. It, it's this is the I got. Yeah, uh, and it shows between the, uh, November 21st to December 5th was the, was the incident. So I, I mean, so would would it be okay with you if we do some more investigating? It's kind of hard to investigate that in the middle of this meeting. And um, I think everybody's here. Everybody's here is interested in you getting treated fairly. You know, if it was my water meter, I would want it, you know, corrected too. And so I just want to make sure we get on the same page as far as when the excess of water happened or allegedly happened and and if it's feasible you know you can you get that much water through the system in that amount of time because obviously if it's not possible then we've got a, a problem another problem that we don't understand that we need to fix but it is in my view impossible that i can have over a hundred thousand gallons in one hour that you don't know about yeah. Yeah. It is, it, it, I haven't seen that graph. Yeah. 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 It, it is. It is from the from the site, and you just printed it out. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, it's the only data source data that I have. This is the this is the graph that I'm referring to. But mm -hmm. and that's the same hundred and thirteen thousand gallons. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why it looked at together in one one hour, but that's not. Because there are no readings. But this is what days. this is what the, the, the reading. But I would notice immediately. I mean, it's a very small house, uh, but I think this is the size of five or six. It's an, yeah, it, uh, it, was, yeah, it, happened. it happened quite often. This, this. Now, nobody has also touched, uh, I, I'm, forgive me, I'm not printing your, your analysis, but nobody has touched any other toilets. It was reviewed by the wise guys. Everything is working, is working in, in decent conditions, I guess, no? So, I, I, I think I believe that there is uh, an issue with the, with the measuring device. I mean, this is a major change. And if this has happened once and the toilet was not working, I mean, this happened two months ago. Should have been, you know, should have other episodes of this magnitude or near this magnitude. And you can see there a lot. Yeah, no, it's a toilet. If it's a toilet flapper, it's, it's, it just hangs up till the next time someone uses it. And that, that's fine for two months, two years. Doesn't matter. I think that's exactly what it is. So, if, if it's okay with you, let us go through the data that we can get off yeah, our. We don't, know. we don't know. Right. That's why we gave it unexplained. There's no explanation, no irrigation problem, no, there's no water line break, there's nothing else that would explain that okay. graph I showed you. So, just to be clear, Mr. Flores, what, what would you, what are you asking the board to do? Are you asking for a refund of the whole amount or? I think it's reasonable. Oh, I, um, yeah, he's a low user. Like I said, he mm -hmm. uses his average is 3,000 gallons. Of That's right. so it's it's first low, low user. Hmm. And I think well, I've only one week. Oh, just kidding. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. It's, just, it's just, I wrote on this back heck, when I did the credit. It appears to be a toilet. Well, it can it waste 11,000 gallons in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So it would have had to been gone for multiple days for that to yeah, happen. It was over Thanksgiving. And it's, it's got quite a few just like this. Interesting because the data that I have doesn't show that at all. Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. I mean, you can see it right here. This is from directly from the yeah. site. That's from the site because it wasn't broadcasting for a few days prior. So it lumped all the usage on one day. Okay. Yeah, You've had the data download, which is more accurate. It, you, know, yeah, it, it, it even, you can see it. For instance, just show my You can see it. This is now. And this is what I took from the site. You see, you see the amount? It's clearly. The day is clearly what happened. I mean, this is from your site. Right. So, an issue. All of these is almost insignificant yeah. compared to. So, there's some question about whether the meter collection is transferring information correctly. Transfer. How do we know the transfer of information in your systems and because, because, the because the information on the meter is. It's not so we physically it's download. So we physically download it. Because you downloaded this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying so somehow the AMI didn't transmit data to our system correctly. 
compiles the data. You can't get a signal, it just compiles the data until it can get a signal through. Water is being used, it's just lumping it on that one hour. That's what she said. When, when a signal finally goes through, that's why we went to the meter. I get it, but that's still incorrect transmission of the data. It's giving you the full amount in one hour as opposed to the full amount over the period of time that it was used. Right. And I think we downloaded it at the meter because we wanted to see exactly when the thing started, when it ended. Do you have a copy of that that you can give Mr. Flores? Were you home during this time? Did you say it again? Were you home during those days? I was absolutely was I mean, you know, waking up to to work. I I, I worked not just that one hour, but the multiple days yeah. prior to yeah, absolutely. I was absolutely at home. And uh, um also I, another request that I have I received a nice note saying that uh, they're going to shut down my, my water tomorrow because of no payment. So you can kindly help me with that and and allow me a few more days to pay the, the few hundred dollars. That, uh, I paid a hundred dollars just to, you know, continue with the process. But I see what and now that is. I th I think we can delay any shutting down of the water until this is resolved. Yeah. But I, I mean, I have some experience with this, and it's obvious for me that probably the data system. This whole thing. It could be. I mean, these aren't calibrated. There's many things that could be. Almost brand new meters for the whole woodlands, and they're much more accurate oh, than yeah. the ones that we had previously. So, yeah, we have time. That's probably, I mean, the calibration. I, I, Are you a water smart user? Yes. You do? Did, that's when you got the information? I, I get the, yes, I get the text messages and emails when. And I exceed 60 gallons a day. Yes. So it was just a one time, hey, you use more water. Okay. Okay. I think we I think we understand and we appreciate you sharing this with us. And um I would like to say to be continued until we finish making sure everyone understands and can resolve it fairly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, item three, consider an act on request for additional adjustment for account 274310-12. Is that the one we just? We've verified the meter, we've calibrated the meter, we've downloaded the data. And then we've followed the policy. Yeah, that's what I was that's, We do have a policy the for this. He's requesting amounts above your policy. So it seems like the only thing, um, I mean, the main gripe then is that instead of getting notifications over those previous days that there's an ongoing leak, he just got a spike. I got one notification of a large amount of water that had leaked over some period of time. And I can see when he was signed up. I don't think he was signed up before this event. Before this event. Registered one month ago, so no. He was not getting, I mean. He wasn't signed up. But the data he has is not matching your data. Well, yeah, whatever. they both have the same total amount, but what he has th shows that it happened over one one hour, which is right. no. impossible. His antenna, we can make a work order to go replace the antenna, but it looks like it's working now. And his neighbor's data was fine, so. Yeah, a lot of times you don't get, because of all the trees, you don't get the, the, the data three times. Sometimes it'll come highly. I don't know, but the same. It would, it would come. I'm confused though. It would compile from November. Yeah. See, he just got. Kind of, he just downloaded that because he went back. Go back. So it, down, it, it compiled because he is a late subscriber. Is that what I heard? He can go back 96 days to get his usage from 96 days prior. It didn't yeah. compile it because of that. It's just that he was yeah, able to. Anybody that signed that wants an adjustment for maintenance the water. Just so they can get it. Most of them aren't signed up until they have to leave. Now they are. So, how often 
on a monthly basis? Do you see this? Every, every, every month you see the thousand dollar. Everything with the thousand, I, I, I can handle in house. I don't need to turn to the book. We get lots of them. Could we see a table of that? With everything over eight hundred dollars. What? Oh, we can. Yeah. Imagine you, know, you say it's frequent. I just want to know how frequent or over a thousand. I mean. Well, what are you needing? What are you asking? I just like to see a frequency table of how often well, we have issues. If, over, oh, a over a thousand, you bring it to the board. Correct. correct. So, over a thousand, I bring it here. Under a thousand, we handle in house. I haven't seen. I mean, you said you've never seen one of these. Well, they, they not, over not recently. I can't remember the last time. So yeah, he's saying there's a thousand. lot of under one thousand ones. Yeah. Well, it looks wide. Yeah. Who's the third one the, in the three minute three minute meetings? Is this between? Zero and a thousand, or between eight hundred and a thousand, or over eight hundred and twelve hundred. Between zero and a thousand. Yeah. So, so those twenty-five a month you get, those are people that come in and say, "Man, my bills spiked way higher than normal." Whether it's eight hundred or six hundred or a thousand. Yeah. Have regularly full auto fill stock or toilet problem or like my neighbor problem. that I gave you unexplained or a few. We hmm. don't have an explanation. We don't we can't tell what happened. They don't have any repair bill. They don't. There's nothing that they can think of. But it's very clear when you look at the margin, the graph I have, not the one you should belong. It's a toilet. I've seen it. Just I can see it. It's yeah, just, it happens. You ask them all the same questions. You got a pool. You have an auto fill. You have an irrigation system. We make them get a wise guy, wise guy irrigation inspection. If they do, are you signed up for WaterSmart? You need to sign up for that if you're not. It's, it's, it's a routine we go through every time someone wants to get something. We don't just lay down and give it. When it's ever, whenever they want more than what we give them, that's why he's here. So basically, his bill was a thousand and four, and you gave him a credit of six fifty six. So, so he's being asked to pay three hundred forty eight dollars. Hundred now, so he owes two forty-seven eighty as of January twenty-fifth. Where's he though? Two forty-seven. He owes two fifty. Or he owes two fifty. I think. Relative. I mean, that's like. What's, what's the address? Or do you have it? Okay. I, I can just give you the account. That's fine. It's like a year and a half of his normal payment. Is that right that his normal payment is twenty dollars a month? That sounds incredibly low. Fifty-two dollar bill, one hundred twenty-nine, twenty-one in the months. Yeah, prior to that it. makes more. Then it dropped down to seventeen fifty. And then dropped to seventeen fifty. Sounds unreasonably low, doesn't it? Yeah, we need to look into that. It's a thousand. <laughs> so that sounds like an antenna problem. I asked for the billing supervisor to. Make a work order change the antenna. If it was super low the month before and then super high the next month. Because his, his immediate neighbor, their usage is fine. No, no gaps. Okay. Or is we, it, we, or, we do things a lot. Not out of the order. That has happened. Yeah. Why? They travel. You go out of town for a month. We don't know. But. Well, basically, October and November together were a normal two months almost. Not quite, but right over Thanksgiving. Two weeks. Okay. Paul, do you have any thoughts on this? I I, I missed where the water went. Was it a pool or something? We don't know. It sounds like that. So I mean, how do you down I the drain? Don't know how you miss a hundred thousand gallons a week or whatever. So I'm, I'm, yeah, eight thousand a day. From yeah, I mean you. I was notified by your system when I had a drip at my water faucet. He, didn't have yeah. a he, he wasn't water well, water. Yeah, I know. I saw. I said I, I, that that would have notified him right well, away. Well, no, not a water smart wasn't wasn't reporting the data properly. No, I'm right. But he he didn't have 
the data anyway. He wasn't signed up to receive those messages. So it doesn't matter how good the data was. He wouldn't so have received Mike, it because he yeah. not signed up. Mike, the 113th out, you said in November and December? Yeah, it's, it, uh, it's 113,000. I think it'd be helpful if you could just share your, your daily data. Water. Yeah, he's got what he's got back. Well, and he's got a hundred bucks for 110,000 gallons of water. Those bills in, the, in those months were higher than normal or normal or. But if it was. Uh, November was very low. The three months prior were higher than what he said, $20. Yeah. And he yeah. moved in one month before that. He moved in in July. Uh, okay. Maybe dollars, sixteen thousand. I don't know. normal bill is twenty dollars. Is that's the seven? Yeah. He said, "I'm tempted to just, you know, if, if he's saying his normal bill is twenty bucks and he had, and that was abnormally low when they were normally a hundred and twenty. Yeah, he had a bill that was twenty. Okay, I'm. I think I think we've heard enough. Yeah. He's he's being asked to pay three hundred and fifty-eight dollars for that month, three hundred and forty-eight dollars total, two hundred and forty-eight dollars more. All right. Thank you, Jeannie. I think that means we need to move on. So <laughs> we're almost done. Without further ado, uh I'll make a motion that um we go with Mike Mooney's correction and adjustment uh, so that we don't lose money as a district, but he still isn't paying full price. And there's enough uncertainty in the information going back and forth that uh, I don't see just, I can't justify giving him the rest of that money back. I second the motion. There's no additional adjustment will be made. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. You've already made a $656 adjustment. That's huge. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? <clears throat> all right. Thank you, Mike, for sharing okay. all that and staff. So, and thank you for the notification that we need to move on, Jeannie. <laughs> All right, item four, consider an act on request for adjustments or relief from charges imposed by the district. I think you. Brings us to the consent agenda, items five through nine, uh, last month's minutes, financial reports, tax collector's report, annual survey of wage scales, expense approvals, Comments, questions on any of the consent agenda items? I abstain on the minutes. That's a what here. Oh, you're back. Make yep. a motion. Second. I've got a motion to approve and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And, and yeah. we have one abstention on the minute. That's, thank you, Don. Brings us to item 10, SGRA Woodlands Division Report. Mr. Meeks. We do have four or five items to go through. Some are in your packets and we passed out just before the meeting. I'm going to hit the high level highlights of these items, but if you need more information, uh, just let me know and I'll stop, slow down, and go through it. Okay. First item is on page 16 runs through page 28. These are our monthly operations report for the Woodlands Division of the GRP Division, including the financials for both of them. That's really out of ordinary. Most projects are going on as planned and uh, there were violations. One corrections note is on page 17, the top right, the rolling 12 month water loss. It is not 5.50%, it's actually 4.21%. Play a part in the conversation we'll have here in a little bit. Those numbers, water loss typically is not that round. And so 
we double checked it. So how does that get divided between accounted and unaccounted? That information I do not have with me, but I can get it and I can get it to. So are you suggesting the 2.2 and the 3.3 are a little off as well? And we're checking on the water loss across the entire woodlands for the last uh, 12 months and came across the total being off, but didn't split it up. But the budget amount is five and a half. Other questions on the month of April? Next item begins on page 39. This is the time of year when we start bringing budget items to the MUDs, staff for action, just go on the loop of what we're looking at, where we're going. So this is what we call the budget preparations, budget guidelines presentation that was given to the audit committee and the trustees. Not going to go through the whole presentation, but just hit some highlights. Questions let me know. So we look at two main things. Uh, in this presentation, and that's the ma demands for water and demands for sewer. So on page 31 and page 32 and 33 as well, is going to show the demands for the two, three, four, five year averages, as well as the associated water loss. Now, the demands are broken up into production. So obviously what we produce and what we deliver. Then sales is going to be what y'all said. The difference between those two is going to be the water loss itself. And so... What we're looking at right now, you can see on page 33, our recommended uh, demands for water at this point in time is keeping with the FY 2024 demands. <clears throat> that is 5.588 billion gallons of production, groundwater and surface, and then sells at about 5.3 billion, sorry. Now, one thing to note at the trustees, I got some questions on the water loss. So going back on Thursday and Friday, looking more into the water loss, that's how we found the issue on the uh, MOR that was submitted. There was a number, <clears throat> there was a couple numbers that were kind of transposed in the rolling water loss. So in looking at that, we were recommending a 5.21% as of this report, but in the actual budget, we're actually gonna look at about a four and a half percent water loss. And if you're curious about where that came from, I can show you a sheet. Just didn't want to give you more paper. But you'll hear more about that and you'll see more about that as we get closer to budget. But the question basically was, if the two-year average of water loss is 3.84%, the three years 4.91%, why are we recommending a 5.21% water loss? Why are we going up higher instead of maintaining around a 4%? <clears throat> so went back, looked at the numbers and yeah, the two-year average is just under 4%, the rolling 12 is just under 4.21%. So 4.5% makes um, still a little bit conservative. It's not at 4%, it gives a little bit of wiggle room, but it's not as conservative as 5.5%. Now, the good news is the production number stays the same, but the sales increase. Sales increase, revenue goes up a little bit, hopefully it mitigate any expenses increasing. Next time we look at is the sewer sales. And so what we do is we take a look at the winter averaging and say, okay, what are the winter averages? Two, three, four, five year averages as well. Looking at the original data that we had, now the data we had was up until December 31st, we're recommending to plant billion gallons a year as well. But going back to something that Don Sarah said last year, and asked, I believe a couple of years now, is we're not going to stick on just this data. As we get new data over the next coming months up until we prepare the budget, we're going to be looking at the demands and adjusting up to that. We're not just going to pick 2023 as it and say we're done. As we get new data from your winter averaging and everything coming in, we're going to update the demand numbers. If you look at the two-year average, it's almost 2.9. Three-year average is a little bit over 2.8. So if those numbers continue trending up over the next few months, that 2.8 billion gallons or sewer could go up as well. I'm not sure how much. Um, to your average is 2.9. Don't know if I want to go to 2.9. I may go to 2.85 or so, but do you want to consider all the information as it comes in? What page is that? 35. I skipped over page 34, didn't you? So when I get down with sewer demands, we'll swing back. If there's any questions on sewer demand, I'll talk about page 34. So water and sewer are still under uh, investigation at this point, if you will, but right now we don't see it dropping below what we currently have established. 
is providing information on the concentration and, and the low launches volume? So we base the budget off of um, demand, off the of volume. I can definitely look at the 12 month and everything else when it comes. We look at it on our side. We would look at chemicals and oxygen and everything else. For the mud level, we typically don't provide that. But if you'd like to see it, we can definitely show well, that's it. That's what drives your chemicals, isn't it? It does. Okay. I mean, the question is, is load going up or is it just volume going up? So volume's going up. Load's actually stay maintaining right around, like BOD's 250 milligrams per liter. ESS a little bit higher, but it is maintaining. You're saying the concentration is maintaining? Concentration is maintaining. So the actual demand is going up. On page 34 is the surface water groundwater blend ratio. Um, this is a one pager because the trustees a few years ago had a ad hoc committee that made a recommendation to maintain at least a 50 50 blend ratio and then when possible go up to 65 percent surface water. So this page is put in there just to uh, reconfirm that the mud still want to stick with the 50 50 blend ratio. The process that you see there, uh, the green is basically where we are now. The blue boxes after that is a high level summary of the general process of getting the uh, blend ratio in play. All this to be said, if the Woodlands Muds recommend 50%, we take it to the GRP review committee and ask them or recommend to them 50% for y'all, whatever for the rest of them. The review committee can make a recommendation for or against that. Last few years, they were recommended to keep it at 50%, but as the population of Montgomery County grows, the demand also increases. So GRP right now is stuck at a 13 million gallon a day capacity. So as population grows, demands increase. I can't keep everybody at 30, 35%, 50% because I have only a certain amount of surface water to give out. So we're going to present the same information to the review committee, recommending Woodlands at 50, 50%. The other entities will be reduced slightly to about roughly 30, 35% across the board, but y'all maintain at 50%. If the review committee and the board. So and what the plan was underutilized. It is. Yeah. So why why were you holding it constant? GRP review committee and the board set the actual production rate of the facility. Their direction so far has been to operate at the lowest operating capacity. Yeah. So the rates don't increase. Doesn't make any sense. So the plant's rated for 30 MGD, but it is running right now at 13 MG annual average roughly. So why would you invest in a plant and not run it? Pull out as much as you can. That has been a lot of discussion, and it's a lot longer conversation to have that I'll be happy to have with you at some point in time. It's not, it costs more. <laughs> I mean, that's the short answer. Mm -hmm. It would make the surface water rate higher. That's the very short answer. There's not. A, you would think you would get more bang for your buck, but you don't. In running it with more higher volume. And that's hard to understand, but that's, am I wrong? I mean, um, so we did a special rate assessment study in, I think, December, ended in December. And we were trying to show the cost to increase it from 13 MGD to 16, and then from 16 to 19. Okay. Every 3 million gallons in capacity we go up, the cost of it is still $2 million. Now, you don't really get additional revenue from that. I mean, you do because it's surface water slightly higher, but you have the same demand at the end of the day. GRP's demand is about 20 billion gallons. All I'm doing is swapping groundwater for surface water. And so the demand stays the same. I'm just producing more of this more expensive product. More, more expensive water. Yeah. But isn't that what we want to do? Entirely agree. That's what some people want to do. But if you want the cheapest water and you don't care about groundwater being pumped out, you know, for future generations, then you go with the list. That's a different story. I'm, 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 all my experience, I'm happy with the 50 50. The 50 50 is about what we can do and not get into uh, uh, water quality problems. Yeah, exactly. At this time. Yeah, but when, you know, if GRP comes back and says, well, the countywide demand's going up, we well, can't you need to convince 50 /50, the other people to pay then, the money. So, I mean, I think our the, the message from GRP users, is yeah. we want our 50 50. We want, we want the outside users to be 50 50, and we want to increase the production to account for that. But remember, we still have people that aren't paying their bills. Right. Yeah. That's what it's not saying. that easy. Well, and I don't disagree with that. Well, we're not saying outside needs to go to 50 50. We just say we want to stay at 50. 
Because they're already well, outside. We, I don't think we really you, yeah. fit, doing something other than 50 50. It's you have to predict every day what the demand's going to be, and you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But the 50, so 50 50 on average lets us do more in the wintertime. We can do more in the wintertime. We're trying to swap it so we do more in the summer because that's when the groundwater is used more often. And so if we use it more than we use, we use more surface water in the summertime than we use the aquifers less in the summertime. But you get into uh, disinfection byproduct issues. You do with the heat, but then in the winter, if you use too much surface water, you get into the water age with the cheap That's true. So it's, it's a big balance with everything we're doing. But the good news is your representative on the review committee is and he does take it every time and say 50 50. And so far, it's been successful every year to get 50 50 without discussion. But point well taken. There is a point. We're going to start those conversations this year with the review committee that as demand increases, you do need to increase the production of the plant. There will be a day. There will be a day. Or you're going to start having, needing to cut people off, you know, smaller systems yeah. to. We want, to I just, we want to conserve groundwater, which is, I think that's what we want to do. Well, two things. You want to conserve groundwater and you want to utilize your asset you invested in. The way to do that is to get, get the other there. users to use more surface water. But we continue to have DRP turned down. Well, that's the I mean, that's the message we need to send to the review committee, I think. Ongoing discussions back and forth. Say that. But we agree with you. I mean, you have a half a million dollar plant. You want a fifty million dollar plant for thirty of GD, and you're at less than half. Of that. I don't think you do agree with me because you did. You, the river authority would pressure the DRP to sell more water. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I don't speak directly to the board, so I know very little of what they say. So. Well, it impacts your economics, yeah. so I understand why you don't want to do it, but I think on the long term, it's the right thing to do. Raise the final bill. Conroe is the big user. <laughs> so moving on, if you look at page 36, the next few pages after that, talk about some of the O&M expenses that we're looking at at this point in time. As well as some of the direction we have received from our finance committee and our uh, board of directors. On page 30, 37, it talks about the utilities, mainly just the natural, excuse me, just the electrical cost because natural gas is usually less than $10,000 a year. So, with electrical, what you're looking at is our current budget for FY24 is about $3.8 million. The rolling 12 is about $2.9 million. The direction we've received from the finance committee is to, for FY25, is to use the actuals plus 10% for the FY25 budget. So Ed did receive some questions at the trustees related to that, that he said he was going to look into, so that 10% may be adjusted, but it also may not be adjusted. But if you take the 2.9 million for the rolling 12 plus your 10%, that's give or take a $500,000 uh, reduction on the electrical cost versus the FY24 budget. Well, these, this chart shows the volume or, or, of chlorine used. I mean, yeah. it's not the price. The price is, remember we talked at the last budget, how much chlorine had gone up? Yeah, chlorine's on the next one, the way it prints out the slides. Well, this is this is electric electricity, right, on page 37? I was looking at chlorine. Yeah, 38 is going to be chlorine. If you look to the far right, it says utilities. That's going to be, looks better on the screen than in print. But I mean, has the price of chlorine gone down any or? Yeah, it's not gone down. It's Same. semi stabilized. Uh, so, speaking of chlorine, on page 38, you'll see chlorine. Right now, the budget's 773000 and change. Well, 12 months is about 650000 And so, what we're looking at going forward is uh, the actual rolling 12 months plus whatever increase the supplier gives us. Right now, I have it slated as five to seven. Recent talks are saying somewhere between three and five percent. So, if they come back and they say, "Hey, it's going to be a three percent increase," that we'll just tack three percent onto the annual cost and we'll go from there. Unless we see an increase in production, a decrease in demand, or something else that would cause the need to increase. Page thirty-nine outlines outlines a couple of uh, projects that we're looking to do in the ONM budget. First one's going to be the televising of gravity sewer mains. Right now, there's $30, $40 million of sewer rehabs in the project plan slated to start in 2025. We're going to push those out to 2026. And instead, in 2025, 
do another uh, condition based assessment of those lines before they're rehab. If we need them to stay in 26, we'll stay and keep them in 26. But if they need to be pushed out, then we'll push them out accordingly based on that condition assessment. Next item underneath that, the Senate Bill 3 requirements uh, for Wonder Strong Leary. The legislator made legislation was made to uh, make, basically make Senate Bill 3 to make everybody a little bit more responsive to their customers when it comes to their water, wastewater, water systems, generators, and stuff like that. Then in December of 23, the TCQ staff initiated changes to Senate Bill 3. And so we've read through it and there are some items in there that would cost additional expense on our side. So we're looking for a consultant to come in and help us understand what those changes are and if we can basically get a waiver to get around them since we feel that our procedures are better than what they're right. Page 40 talks about just some of these other items um, that are generally kind of the health insurance, property insurance, uh, the staffing, uh, those percentages increases that are recommended by our Finance Committee and our senior council. Everything at this point in time, unless it's set in stone, so the stuff in the Finance Committee is set in stone until I hear otherwise, but everything else is still being reviewed and will quite possibly change. That's in my memory. In staffing, we had some one time increase associated with the general manager double staffing, and we said we would give that back. So I guess that's not in your budget, that's in the WIA budget. There will right? be a portion to the Woodlands Division, but our staffing plans are still being, um, actually they were starting in last week, so I won't see those numbers until like mid-March, maybe beginning of April at the very latest. Then I'll be able to see where, um, like accounting, HR, senior management, where their allocations are changing. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have one, and, and we have one. Yeah, we have some <laughs> other ones. Yeah, so but those were a couple years. Years got gone. Okay, but I, I do expect to see some increases on the staffing side, the allocation side from our side, with all the wastewater stuff going on. We usually, take a bit of time for the engineers, accounting and stuff. So, but you'll see that right here. Uh, May it's when we present. What's what's considered a main for these televising? How big? So on our side, it's anything over 15 inches. 15. Okay. These lines that we're looking at here, most of them were in the uh, the biggest one I can think of is about 42 inches. It's one that runs from Lake Woodlands through um, Hughes Landing all the way up to Research. That's the first one to do bare range stuff like that. That's one under the lake. That is not. There's only one that's going under the lake. Lake and that's currently set for rehab. I think construction next year. Well, there's only one more remaining that has not been rehabbed. I guess I should say everything else we verified a couple years ago has been rehabbed. How will that be replaced or rehabbed? Uh, basically, you're going to take a leave lighting it. and put a lighting in. And you're going to sleep it. There. There's some logistics. But you still need to have back. Uh, you still need to have flow and everything through it. So. <clears throat> All right, moving on to page 43. So page 43 is about a 9, 10 page memo on the FY23 excess funds. This is something that we bring annually at this time, and we bring it to the trustee, well, the audit committee, the trustees, the MUDs, and then ask for the MUDs to vote off, excuse me, the trustees to vote at the March meeting. Reminder, this is a vote by the trustee, majority vote of the trustees, not the individual months. So at the end of FY23, there was 5.1 million of excess funds per the calculations and the budget. What we've done in this report is go through and say basically two things. It is on page, one of the items is on page 46. First option is that the MUDs would like a refund of those funds to y'all sales. That shows you which percentage of 23's water sales were by each MUD and then what the percentage back to y'all would be, the dollar amount back to each of the MUDs would be. As you're looking at this chart, keep in mind you will see 386. MUD 386 is a part of the River Authority system, but it is not a part of Woodlands Water. So they do have a vote on where this goes and they do have a stake in getting some money back or allowing it to stay to the projects. 
I say that because there are 10 trustees, and so if it is a deadhead of 5 5 at the trustee level, then 3 and 6 plus 3. So there's generally two, you can consider three different options with the excess funds. One is the MUDs can refund, as shown on that previous page. Second is the trustees vote to allow the River Authority to keep the money. If we keep the money, we do present the projects we're going to allocate the funds to or use the funds to. And then there's a third option that some have asked about is, can it be a partial refund and a partial you keep the funds? Which is uh, also possible as well. So kind of go through this since you've seen how much the MUDs could get back and give a high level of some of the projects. Page 43 and 44 just have a high level snippet of each of the, the funds being asked for, why it's being asked for, and general thing of the project. Following the calculations, the refund to the MUDs and everything, there is a one page uh, high level justification, if you will, of what that project is, what it's needed for, and where the money would be going. If you have questions, I can go through that, but just high level. Uh, item number one is emergency reserve. This is an item that was started a number of years ago. And generally, the inflation and the interest have kept tabs with each other, but in the last few years, it has not been. So contractually, we need to increase the emergency reserve from the current 2.2 million to about 2.6 using the methods that are outlined in the resolution. So that's where that 439,000 would go to. Second item is the asbestos or AC water line condition assessment testing. This, as y'all know, is a mud requested item overall. When we originally looked at this on the high uh, estimate side, we were thinking it was three to three and a half million. Met with a consultant along with Woodlands Water, talked to the entire scope and everything, which we're going to pass out here in a minute. <clears throat> consultant came back and said for the destructive testing, non-destructive testing, and the engineering analysis and everything, it's about a million dollars. When you throw in the excavation that's needed uh, for the destructive and potentially non-destructive testing, that's give or take uh, 600,000. So that's how we come up with the 1.6 million needed for the AC water line condition assessment testing. Town center water line easements. Uh, this is the final step in the process of getting this project construction ready. It's not that we are moving to construction. We know that project's currently on hold, but the easements could take six months. It could take a year. It could take longer to get ready. So we're asking for funds to go ahead and get the easements taken care of. And uh, that way, whenever any mud's decided it's time to move forward with the line, we can go ahead and move forward without having to wait a year for uh, easements to be acquired. Item number four is the wastewater plant two grit classifier. This was replacing a uh, basically a grit classifier that was originally constructed with the facility. It has since corroded out. We tried to do a band aid to make it work, and it did not work. And so now we're asking to replace uh, the equipment that was originally designed with the facility. Last item is 242. Textiles coming through and expanding the roadway, putting in detention ponds and the storm sewers, and we have four lines that are in the way that we need to lower and adjust. That one has to be done regardless, and so we're uh, moving forward with that currently under O&M funds, but this would help offset the large expense from the O&M funds that was unplanned. High level summary, but I'd be glad to touch any questions, touch on any questions y'all have. Is it accurate or close, close to accurate to say if we if we say we want to get the refund now that we just include this $5 million in next year's budget? You are correct. Kind of a. It is. I don't really see the point. Well, we get the excess funds. We go through, we don't make up projects. And so that's why there's easy justifications. We've done some engineering to show you this is what the funds are needed. You can always delay things, but that comes with other hurdles down the road. It's not like this is a wish list of things that you, gee, if we had money come fall out of trees, we'd do this. There's one thing, as you read through this, you will see like the textile one, it has a very specific number. It ends in seven cents. That does round out the excess funds. It wasn't a made up project that we just said, okay, we think this is the estimate. That project's four hundred thousand dollars. The rest of those numbers, the rest of those funds, are coming from the existing O and M budget. So rather than shortchange another project, we're just going to use O and M funds to cover this now. On the text dot project, what kind of line? They said four lines. What kind of line are they? Water, wastewater? Uh, there are four water lines. There's three distribution lines: bottled water, and there's one well collection. They like to pave over things like manholes and 
Yeah, I mean, well, coordination. I know Mike's been on those calls for months. Yeah, now I know you've seen that. Balance yeah. and everything. But this is actually, we need to adjust them for the storm no, water sewer. <laughs> for the storm sewers. Hey, that's why we need to drop them vertically and horizontally. About yeah, that's, that's better, actually. I get we have water lines that are parallel to T42. We do. The uh, yeah. south side, right away. That there's a. Uh, there's a map on page 51 that didn't copy very well, but on the computer looks nice. So the two circles on page 51 to show you the locations, and then inside of those, they're supposed to be, you may be able to see it, there's red boxes that will show the actual areas that we're looking at. Versus, uh, lower. 242. Any questions or discussion on on these excess funds. Yeah. I have a comment. <laughs> Tell me. Now the, the, the excess funds at the beginning of the fiscal year were more or less $2 million in big round numbers. And so I had a comment last year during the budgeting process uh, that the, the original budget that was presented in March or whenever it was presented, and the and the one that was we voted on in July was the same. So that the the budget did not reflect the increase in revenue from irrigation use. It did not reflect any savings that might have occurred because projects didn't get done. Okay, so that's my biggest beef with the budget, and I'm hoping that this year that doesn't happen that, that the numbers are updated so that when we vote on a budget in july or our our vote to our mud our trustee telling them how we want to proceed is a, a, an accurate number the best that we can do i i think there's some room to say that if that had been done last year we might not have had to increase taxes or increase water rates. I don't know for a fact, but it, it would have certainly been less. So we now have a $5 million surplus because we we voted for a higher river authority. The so question is, how much rain are we going to have this summer? I don't know, but by July, don't use the March numbers. Update the budget to July. Yeah, that's, I see what you're saying. That yeah. was your. I remember that you're yeah. bringing that up. And that's like all I'm said, asking. You know, fair. <clears throat> when we were talking to Mans earlier, I said we're going to use what you said last year, and we're going to update it as far as we can prior to the budget. And that's that's the yeah. way historically it was done. Yeah. And, and that, that was to do, do, uh, uh, to the Woodlands months, but it also goes to our finance committee and our board, and we can't be having different numbers. Well, they they need to understand that the. The MUD's highest revenue months are May, June, July, and August. Especially during drought years. Yeah. Yes. That's a hard to predict. Well, yeah. Although it's getting easier, I think. Okay. Good. Glad you repeated that. Right. Thank you. Good comment. I've got a question on there. Number two. How's this uh, 1.6 million compared to what was in, talked about when we talked about the AC line? Projects. So when we first talked about it, it was three and a half, three to three and a half million dollars over four years or something, wasn't it? I believe it's three to four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so this 1.6 million is a whole enchilada. It's everything at one time. That's all 48 miles, correct? Representative sections. <clears throat> right, but well, we're not looking at just 10 miles. Yeah, so this is the entire everything samples of each section this, this wouldn't be a recurring originally i talked about a multi-year program right this is a one and done at this point we're clear on that then right well, I, unless you find something unexpected right, right. i mean you it could change yeah but that's a different analysis but this is set up to be a all the contracts are three years based on a work order that it extends basically a year. It's only for this 1.6 million. Now, if we get additional data, like you said, to say, hey, we want you to further investigate. Well, well that's a separate discussion. Yeah, one phase, one and done. And it was, but it was created from the consultant that's going to do it. 
<laughs> which is the consultant that was requested that did all of the California stuff that was brought up all those months last year. So this is same project team. About half of what you were originally expecting. Then. And you've gone from a three year period to one year period. Yes, sir. Excellent. Based on their recommendations, of what to do. So right. We're about to swag. So on that topic, in front of you, I did pass out the AC waterline uh, condition assessment work order number one. Remember, all of them doesn't mean they're going to be free. It's just part one of the issue to them. Passing this out just so y'all can see what it is. Uh, we did state we were going to pass it out so y'all could review it. So take it, look at it. This is, like I said, this is a million dollars in change of the 1.6 million. The other roughly 600,000 is for excavations. You take a look at this, just keep that in mind. So, Pete, do we need to take an official vote or just a representative show of hands of what people would ask their trustee to vote for at the next meeting? Correct. You need to, the board needs to instruct the trustee how to vote. Okay. Okay. So, so the question is would you vote uh, to go ahead and roll this? Excess funds from last year's budget into these projects as stated on pages 43 and 44. Or do you want to get the refund? I, mean, I, I guess I would like to see. That if we do this, this impacts the 2025 budget. Right. Yeah. yeah. If we could avoid a tax increase or something, I'd rather get the refund. Or the other way around. Or yeah, you can spend the money now and then avoid an increase in 2025. That's what I was. Yeah, these are five million dollars for the projects that are going to get done now instead of being put in next year's budget. So we should well, so we should hopefully would see next year's budget reflect that we spent we pre-spent five million dollars, right? Okay. Understand. Areas that they'll spend these these funds and then fill up the 2025 bucket also. Yeah. There's always going to be projects to be done. Always, always. Oh yeah. Yes. Historically, we've just said keep the funds, and, and I don't know about. Hello. Most of the time, we said just keep the funds, get the projects done. This is probably the biggest excess we've had, yeah. right? And it is because you have the trout, which is eighty-five percent of the excess funds, yeah. which goes back to Yeah. So in the last fifteen years, at least, it's the biggest surplus I've seen. So, a good portion of it is this AC pipe study that we demanded be done. Mm -hmm. So I mean and that. I, like to get that over with. We are contractually obligated to have a certain amount in the emergency reserve, which is right. a little bit low. If you postpone the, the easements for that water line, you run the risk that you have right. different property owners, different delays, um, different construction that makes potential future you know, if you establish those easements now, you prevent new permanent construction that could make those easements more problematic. Yeah, uh, and because uh, you mentioned the construction easements, you got to have those usually for mm -hmm. placing pipe and equipment waiting while mm -hmm. you're doing the construction. Right. And some easements, I guess, we would secure permanent where you leave the pipe. So we'll have permanent. This is for permanent and temporary. Yeah, and temporary yeah. would have a long time period. Well, I mean, yeah, both time. would be necessary to do that. So this text dot deal, the adjustments of the water lines, that has to be done, right? To be, it's yeah, not, they, this is not an optional. Gee whiz, we'd like to do this. Project. Well, text dot will just do it. Right. <laughs> Let it before they can tell us about it. So. And so we that's a direct offset of an unplanned O and M expense. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have the surplus, yeah, what, then what would we be doing? Like, they coming out of the O and M budget. They would go. Most of them would go in the O and M. The AC water lines, the grid classifiers, 
and potentially easements would be in the R and R plan. So there'd be a conversation of do you want to delay anything or do you want to increase the R and R? R and R right now is funded at six million dollars a year. So we can increase it to seven, seven and a half, eight, but I mean a million dollar increase on the on the rates is uh, quite a bit of cash. And on the grit classifier, what what are you doing until you fix it? Right now it's all blind, so we're cleaning the basins a little bit more frequently. That's its own set of issues. It is operationally as well as mechanically. Never heard of putting a band aid on a sewage treatment plant. Well, we've got a classifier plant one, we could go to plant two, and it wouldn't, you know, fit like a glove, but figured we could get something out of it, and yeah, we could. So, All right. Okay. You got to get rid of the grit. I'm gonna tally the Somewhere votes here. Down the line. I'm I'm for moving forward with the projects and not the refund. Both. Me too. Okay. Or as well. Brad or Don. Brad. We're going to spend the money one way or the other, is my belief. My request, though, would be let's see if we can make it into 2025 and not increase rates again. Okay. So is that a, is that a refund or or not? No, no I think we, we spend the money now, but it's with commentary, okay? <laughs> okay. okay. Done. Um, it's three to one. <laughs> Abstain. There you have it. So the vote is three to one that we're going to move support getting those projects done and not ask for a refund. It's the last item I have, not sure to make quick, so I used to have work with the is this item I passed out prior to. It's a technical memorandum from Freeze Nichols. And high level, what we asked the consultant to do is since this project was 24, 26 months, and a lot of people started that were there in the beginning, they were not here at the end, they started afterwards, so on and so forth. We asked the consultant to prepare a, prepare a an executive summary, if you will, of the entire study. So instead of reading, reading a thousand pages, you can reach one. So this is high level, but it does connect the dots between the different studies, the stakeholder meetings, the presentations, so on and so forth. And also towards the back, I believe on page nine or 10, it starts linking in to answer some questions we've received about uh, condition of the plant. This study was not the only condition and assessment of the plant that we've done. Over the past, basically since 2014, 2015, there's been a few studies. This document shows those studies and what the key findings for those studies on the condition of the plant was. So this is just a diff, uh, additional information for y'all to re review, but it summarizes the entire wastewater strategic plan phase one and two into one concise document. This looks like a good reading item for everybody. Thank you. Better than a thousand pages. Yes. That's all I have unless you have. All right. Thank you, Chris. Chris, the additional report should be plus to Google Drive. The thousand pages. <laughs> Those plus the additional reports um, regarding condition assessment on the plant that are referenced in that technology. So some of those go back to 2010, 2015. Um, we wanted to make those available if anybody wants to take it. Can you send links to those documents? Someone else to hunt for them? I'm going to let Eric Shelley do that. <laughs> The links to the Google Drive or those documents. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can send it to you. Links to the documents, not the Google Drive. They're on the Google Drive. Basically. I know they're on the Google Drive. There's a lot of stuff on the Google Drive. So you go to Google Drive and it can take you hours to find stuff. I can send you a link to the direct folder. That's what I'm asking. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Item 11, Pete is going to discuss funding alternatives for proposed infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. At the March. Okay, we're working with uh, yep. 
We're working on that right now. We'll have that ready in March. Time is the next meeting. Thanks. Go to item 12, receive update on the Bear Branch, Panther Branch, Research Forest Drainage Projects. So real quick update on that is we're still working with the consultant LJA on finalizing their report and their findings. Uh, we've also authorized them to take uh, a couple of the alternatives that they um, evaluated and do cost estimates for those uh, construction cost estimates. So when we sit down and look at the results of how um, the impacts on water surface elevation for the various channel improvements, we'd have cost to go with that also to kind of give the full picture um, and be able to move forward with the project. So that's where we're at now. There'll be more in the next couple months and when we're ready to really present that to all the funding partners. Okay. Good deal. Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yep. Appreciate it, Dan. Um, attorney's report, Katie. Um, I'm filling in for Brian today. It still says Brian on the agenda because he was expecting to be here, but um, he was on a family vacation in there, probably delayed returning. Mm -hmm. um, but for the attorney's report today, I just wanted to update you on the election. Um, the deadline for submitting candidate applications was Friday at 5. So we have received and processed all the applications. Um, Y'all are having a contested election. All of the woodlands except for Metro have contested elections this year. Um, so you're doing a joint election with Montgomery County. And uh, we have a timetable from the county and we're complying with the various uh, deadlines they have. Um, and just so you know, Shelley has scheduled the ballot drawing, which determines the order of the names on the ballot. And that's going to be on Monday, February 26th at 10 a.m. Do we know the and names? The notice out about that. Do we have the names of the people who are signed up? Yes. The names for this district. Yeah. Also posted on your website. Too. All right. <laughs> Candidates plus the incumbent, yeah, I mean, they two incumbent, yeah, two uh, other pilots. Marta, Marta, Jim, um, and Emily Britt, and Stephanie didn't um, get married. Right? Still, just the two of them, right? There's just two that are running against the incumbent. Yes, an open seat. Uh, open and done. Well, Stanford's not running again. Right. Didn't that. Me either. That's all I have for you. All righty. Thank you very much. Item 14, consider adoption of resolution concerning, uh, concerning developed district status for 2024 tax year. We uh, received the exhibit from the engineer late last week that is included in your packet. If you want to take a look at it, we're going to defer on the resolution um, for today. We didn't have a chance to review all the exhibits. We're comparing them to last year's exhibits to see what changed and if there were any significant changes, uh, discuss those with LJA. So um, we'll have the resolutions um, ready for March and we'll have those in the draft ahead of time so you can take is there any reason to believe we, we would not continue as a developed district? No, based on what the exhibit says, you're developed again this year. Um, okay, so any implications for delay in 30 days on this vote? No, you really just have to have it done before you set, set your tax rate, um, but we like to do it earlier in the year. So we'll. Um, have those resolutions on the drive at time. Very good. Item 15, uh, general manager's report. All right, we've covered most of the items, but I uh, just wanted to point out um, the uh, Gulf Coast Water Conservation Symposium is this Thursday. It'll be led by your. Yeah, the Honorable. The Honorable Paul Nelson. Yeah. That's right. Not well led. I'm going to be the. What is it? Moderator? Yeah. Master of Ceremonies, I believe. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That, I, I'm not done much of that. But yeah, my job is to tap dance and make everybody behave. And uh, you going to wear a tuxedo? Hmm? 
You're going to wear a tuxedo? Oh, no. Top hat and no, cane? No, absolutely. But I think, uh, I think we've, at this time, we have 125 folks signed up and uh, from all over the region, and which is what we wanted to do. And there's still room if you wanted to drop by there. It's over on the west side of Houston. And Make us proud. A couple more members, myself, be there. I hope to, yeah. I always do my best in that regard. I'll watch it on YouTube. <laughs> It'll probably be broadcast. Thanks for mentioning it. Absolutely. And also, just want to give you a quick update on One Water um, Task Force is what it was called before. Um, last few months, we've been talking behind the scenes on identifying some goals for, uh, if you recall, uh, the township voted last year to uh, to proceed with uh, or agreeing to uh, to start that up again. And um, we've been developing some specific goals before we moved really any further on that. So um, we had an initial unofficial meeting um, a couple of weeks ago to, with the uh, township leadership to talk about uh, what that might look like going forward. So more to come, but uh, it is uh, starting to move forward just slightly. Uh, and then uh, last thing I had was really to kick it over to John on the uh, communication report. Amen. Jagger? Uh, each of you should have this draft in the update on the Let me spread them around here. I realize I never follow up. <laughs> no worries. Uh, we have until Friday uh, to make any changes. So this is your draft here. Uh, make these changes tonight, or I can communicate with somebody over the next day or two, finalize those. We just need to get them out of the printer uh, by Monday. Again, this is going to go in next month's water bill. And then we'll post it online and we'll send an email out to your district. Uh, Does it, all the other MUDs look pretty similar or you have a lot of customization going on? For the most part, similar. There's a few. Uh, Districts that have specific goals um, beyond this. I like the standardized format. It looks, looks good. Probably yeah. makes it easier on you. Some work falling in. Looks good. Like it? Yeah. Good. Well, if you take it home and and, and you find something, um, you know, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna spit this until Monday. Uh, or so, so let me know. But if I don't hear anything, we'll proceed with this document. Okay. Well, I guess the one thing that's not on here that we had last year was the tax table. Oh, the uh, ch uh, chart. Mm -hmm. You can insert that. There's room. The graphic there at the historical tax rate. It's the reality. I mean, <laughs> well, the other reality, though, is the water rate itself, too. You know, water and sewer rates. So yeah, you want to put them all or got so much room. I'm not sure we, we move the needle on our constituencies one way or the other. Yeah. Over truth. See that it is. Okay. Uh, just very quickly here, page 65, you have a communications report. Uh, I wanted to add to uh, the community survey findings that I presented to you last month, uh, some new other metrics to help us figure out how well we did last year, effectively we were. So you'll see um, in big black bold print here throughout the three page report, some different metrics. I'm just gonna touch on a few tonight. Um, Houston Chronicle, we had 28,000 folks engaged with that ad. That's over in the industry average uh, for the amount of impressions we, we got for that. So that was an effective uh, outlet for us. We also used Community Impact and Women's Community Ma Magazine as well uh, as major uh, marketing outlets. Uh, website visitation for the year, we were up 32% over 2022. We're up 48% over the previous five-year average. 
We had 150,000 unique visitors to our website last year. Good, healthy number. Uh, with us water weekly, we had a consistent 57% open rate for that last year. That puts us about 20% above industry average. That means we're communicating each week with 39% of our accounts opening that email. That's important for us. Uh, Facebook, we doubled our, our reach last year. That means the amount of folks that saw our stuff, not followers, but posts that came up in, in there scrolling. Um, so, so that was encouraging, 109% increase there. And um, Water Smart, we continued to improve. We slowed our rate of growth last year relative to 2022. Uh, but we're working on some, uh, some tactics right now to get that rate of increase up. For right now, we're 39% total account from. Mm -hmm. And then uh, lastly, I uh, wanted to update you on our, um, on our Holloway infrastructure, infrastructure communications consultants. So we're working with them. Uh, we, they completed their assessment. We're now working with them on the plan. We have reviewed that PC is in process of commenting on that plan. They'll take those comments, weave them in, and, and hopefully we'll see implementation of that strategic plan in three to six weeks. It's a little, a little open right now, but um, we, uh, the process is moving forward. I'm quite happy with the draft plan. Any questions? Uh, I just wanted to comment about the Facebook, uh, this, you know, in the last, since you came, and they've been very direct, uh, comprehensive. I mean, one of them was about AC pipe and maybe a project that we need to do. And more and more we put that out there and not surprise our customers the better. And I think that's been doing a good job to, you know, we might not only reach 40%, but that's a lot more than most. And, you know, if, if we just get a, a goodly number to understand why we're doing this and that it's coming, that's 90% of the battle. So, I think those are really good. Thank you. you do your Thank report. you, John. No. Okay. Item 16, consider an act on district's annual customer report. Just did that. Yeah, we did that. If he hasn't heard from us by Monday, he's print. This is the annual customer. Oh, yeah. I thought that was like a newsletter. All right. No, that's a report. <laughs> Item 17, authorized review of water conservation plan and drought contingency plan for updates. So you do have a water conservation plan and drought contingency plan. Those are in policy number RNS 35. Um, Shelly put that on the Google Drive for you. Um, we are required to do a comprehensive review of those plans every five years to see if any updates are required. Um, so that's the process that we'd like to get started. Um, Woodlands Water has Ooh. actually already initiated um, some of the steps for that. So, uh, so we need to vote authorize authorized, that. If there are any updates that are required, we'll present an updated policy to you. Um, in a few months. Is this one of the five, or are we on our five year cycle? Yes. So the last time I was done was in 2019. Okay. So we need to vote to approve the next five years, right? Yeah. You can either take a motion or just some districts have just concurred to authorize um, WWA to start that review. However, you want to do it. They've really already How would started. You like? So it's a <laughs> okay. So it's a formality at yeah. this point. Okay. We went out on a limb and hoped you wanted to. All right. Okay. Is anybody concerned about having our legal representation review this policy? Any? Are you bring it back to us for endorsement? The policy that will be presented to you. All right. Hearing no objection, then we're in support of it. Thank you. So, item 18 is the trustee um, report on pages 63 and 64. We've talked about a number of these items. Already, I think March is going to be really interesting as we start talking about funding solutions for some of these big long term projects that are coming in the years ahead. Um, didn't mention that you've got some bids or 
repairs on this building, you know, to hopefully fill in some of the water leaks. So that's exciting. Yeah, this week to do some official assessment testing. And uh, do you want to address the upper watershed representative to the regional flood planning group? I mean, do you? I don't know how it's here, but uh, they're, they're the upper watershed representative for the Central uh, Regional Flood Planning Group um, uh, was uh, the upper watershed representative was uh, Neil, Dr. Neil Gaynor. Uh, he has uh, informed that board that he's stepping down from that position. And so um, the trustees, uh, after hearing rec uh, recommendations, uh, decided to endorse a candidate, Imelda Diaz, uh, formerly with the uh, Harris County Public Control District, uh, to that position. So I think that's the action. That, uh, now, who stepped down? Uh, Neil Dr. Gaynor. Gaynor well, yeah, I thought it was Neil. I didn't quite catch it. And Stephanie Zertuche actually proposed, uh, nominated mm -hmm. Amelda to the yeah. board. And she, yeah, that'd be good. Well qualified. They're both well qualified. Uh, not here, but the board, the regional flood planning group will hear all the recommendations for potential candidates once that comes up. Um, there, there will be more. It took so, quite a bit of effort to get us on there. You know, at first they were ignoring upper. Uh, that's my so that was finally done, and then Neil got on it, which was good. That's very good. All right. Any need for closed session and reopen session? So that takes us to item 21. Any, um, anybody have a proposal for matters to be placed on future agendas? And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.